I know, and we all know, and you know very well, that black men and young black men in particular have been the boogeyman for those who are racist and think that only uh, uh, straight, wealthy white men should have a saying anything. We've been the boogeyman from them since the first day they brought us to this country. And what they mean by DI, in my opinion, is duly elected incumbent. Uh, we know what they want to say, uh, but they don't have the courage to say the N-word. And the fact that I don't uh, believe in their uh, untruthful and wrong ideology, and I am very proud of, proud of my heritage and who I am and where I come from, scares them. Uh, because me being at my position means that their way of thinking, their way of life of being comfortable and suffering and while everyone else suffers is going to be at risk. And they should be afraid because that's my purpose in life. You just heard from Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott, who responded to tweets about him like this, where he was called a, quote, DEI mayor. And also DEI was blamed for the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. So I guess that means that he's to blame as well, since he is a, quote, DEI mayor. Now, there were also blatantly racist memes about him like this shared online by conservatives that are just genuinely despicable. Now, much like CRT and woke, DEI is the latest buzzword on the right. And by invoking DEI, DEI right-wingers think that they're being clever by cloaking their racism and concern trolling over ineffective corporate policy, but of course, we all know exactly what they mean when they invoke terms like DEI. When Brandon Scott was called a DEI mayor, we know that's a synonym for another word that they want to use. But his response, I think, was absolutely perfect. DEI, in this case, means duly elected incumbent, and that's true because he was elected by 70% of the people in Baltimore. He wasn't some diversity hire like they want to make it out to be. But for those unaware, DEI is an acronym for diversity, equity, and inclusion. And it's basically a policy that corporations tried but mostly failed to implement to make their hiring practices more inclusive. Now, right-wingers contend that this corporate emphasis on diversity comes at the expense of the quality of new hires. So rather than hiring a qualified white man, for example, they might pass on him in favor of hiring an unqualified black person instead, thus diminishing overall standards in the name of DEI across the board if all companies adopt this hiring practice. But here's the thing. They're lying. First of all, as Cody Johnston explained in a recent episode of Some More News, which I'll link to down below, corporations haven't really stuck to their promise of adopting more diverse hiring practices, and it was essentially corporate PR. And furthermore, to the extent that people of color end up in powerful positions, they're as qualified as their white counterparts, if not more, because oftentimes, black people have to work twice as hard to get half as far. But concerns about diminished standards by right-wingers is just their way of saying, I don't want black people in white spaces. Spaces. I don't want to be around black people. And they're saying that without explicitly saying it. Case in point. If I see a black pilot, I'm going to be like, boy, I hope he's qualified. Well, well that's the you wouldn't have done that. You wouldn't have. You no, wouldn't have done that not, before. That's not an immediate. No, you wouldn't that's have done that who before. I am. That's no. not what I believe. It is the reality the left has but created. I, I, you get on a plane, you're looking in the gug, but you're wondering, hey, is someone competent or did they just check a lot of boxes? That's kind of scary. So you see, it's not that they're racist and think that black people are inherently inferior. Their concern is that black pilots aren't necessarily as qualified as the white pilots. And these black pilots are only there because they're diversity hires. Very convincing and totally not racist. But I mean, nobody's buying it. And I mean, nobody, as Joy Reid put it. And at this point, it's evident what they mean by DEI, right? OK, it means black people. It's the reason the right complained about critical race theory. It's not fashionable to be openly racist anymore in America, unlike what they call the good old days. So referring to a black mayor as a DEI mayor gets the point across, right? So fellas, why not just say what you mean? You can't stand black people. We get it. You've been heard. Exactly. They just want to be racist and they know that we all know that they're racist, but they still want some plausible deniability. Right. And that's evident because when you dissect their concerns about DEI, they can't even articulate why diversity is bad in the first place. For example, look at how Elon Musk responded when he was confronted by Don Lemon about his DEI concerns. OK, but do you understand how by saying just that standards are being lowered and that you're implying that they're being lowered because people are less skilled and less intelligent and you're talking about people of color and or women. Uh, look, I'm, I'm saying we should not lower standards. But do you, you don't- That's it. I think everyone can agree that you can't, you shouldn't lower standards. 
Right. That's but cool. you're implying that they're lowering standards because of people of color or women, because someone is not a white male. You're saying that they're less skilled and less intelligent. That's what no, you're I'm saying. No, I'm not saying that. I'm simply saying that they are. Then why would they be lowering the standards? I don't know. Why are they lowering the standards? Just so you know, 5% of pilots are female, 4% are black. So you're, you know, you're talking about this widespread takeover of minorities and women when that's not actually true. I'm not saying there's a widespread takeover. Well, you're saying that the standards are being lowered because of certain people. He won't say what he's thinking because he knows what he's thinking is deeply racist and doesn't want to vocalize that racist thought. So he's saying DEI instead. But in the aftermath of the bridge collapse, conservative commentators chose to scapegoat DEI or at a minimum concern troll about it. And um, it was pretty pathetic to watch. But here's one example of that. This sort of thing. Uh, is is why uh, it's important to have the best engineers, uh, the best builders, uh, the best everything building infrastructure. I, I don't know that there was anything uh, unsound within with the bridge itself, uh, but when wa when you watch something like that collapse, it's like we should have the best of the best building all of our stuff. And I think you can already see where I'm going with this. That once you allow that woke thing, and I'm not saying this has anything to do with that specifically. But once you will decide, OK, we won't hire the best of the best to, to build our planes or build our bridges or build our buildings or w our roads or whatever else, then bad things are going to happen. That was absolutely amazing commentary from the Blaze TV's Dave Rubin. You know, I wonder sometimes if Dave might have been a DEI hire for the Blaze because he's very clearly not the most qualified person for that position. So perhaps they hired him because he was gay and they passed over a straight commentator that was more intelligent, but they just really wanted to have a gay guy there because it's not like he wouldn't be useful to them. He's their resident gay guy who shields them from allegations of homophobia when their commentary gets a little bit too yikesy. I mean, I'm not saying that's the case. I'm just speculating here. I don't know what his qualifications are. I'd like to see them personally. I mean, did a straight guy get passed up for Dave Rubin? I'm just asking questions, right? But with regard to the bridge collapse, DEI is just one of many, many conspiracies that were promoted because as a society, we can't just be normal when something tragic happens. We have to say some dumb shit about it. For example, sitting Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene asks if this was an intentional attack or an accident. And I just got to ask, why? I mean, if it were the case that other bridges collapsed simultaneously due to other collisions, then maybe I would understand people's desire to jump to conspiratorial conclusions. But why would this be deliberate, especially considering the fact that the collision happened in the middle of the night, as David Dole pointed out? I mean, wouldn't you want to maximize the damage by planning it during the day if this were deliberate, if it were an attack? I mean, I just don't understand why people are conspiracy mongering automatically before they even have any details about the situation. It doesn't make sense, but this is how we are as a society. And I mean, this conspiracy mongering and DEI, it's not the only wild things that were said to put it mildly. And there were so many conspiracies that I actually did not see the totality of them because CNN's Donnie O'Sullivan gave us a summary of most, if not all of the batshit insane conspiracy theories about the bridge. And seeing this really just kind of made me lose more hope in humanity. But nonetheless, let's listen. Initially, people were claiming that there was a foreign cyber attack on the on the ship, uh, making it deliberately crash into uh, the bridge, of course, which is false. There's absolutely no evidence for that. Um, another another one was that a, the captain of the ship uh, was impaired in some way by the COVID-19 vaccine. Again, totally uh, false. Nothing happened with the captain. Um, others were claiming, uh, obviously, with anti-Semitic and anti-Ukraine um, undertones that Israel uh, or Ukraine were somehow responsible uh, for the attack. Uh, and also, it just kind of got a bit wilder and wilder after that. Uh, there was an Obama. The Obamas uh, produced a movie on Netflix uh, that had a tanker ship run aground in it. So therefore, the Obamas had something to do with this. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you know, the these conspiracy theories and this um, tragic event uh, was taken, uh, used as a political battering ram in our culture wars in this country at the moment. And people uh, decided to to blame DEI, uh, diversity uh, and inclusion policies, some way for uh, the crashing of this ship. Imagine seeing a bridge collapse and your first thought is vaccine or DEI. It's just so wild to me. Like we are sick 
as a society. But listen, the bridge collapse is a microcosm of a bigger issue. A door blew off of a Boeing plane just a month or so ago. A train derailed in East Palestine last year. And all of these things are not happening in a vacuum, right? They're not happening because of some conspiracy involving DEI or the COVID vaccine. The reason why all of these things are happening is because of capitalism. That's the conspiracy that you're looking for. And it's not a conspiracy. It's just how our system is, right? There's no need to complicate things further by conspiratorializing every single thing that happens. The goal is to increase profits and maximize shareholder value by all means necessary. That means you cut corners, you hire less people, you overwork people that exist in your company that you haven't laid off. You ignore safety concerns of employees. You skirt regulations and so on and so forth. That is how capitalism works. That is how corporations function in a late-stage capitalist society. As The Lever reports, the company that chartered the cargo ship responsible for the bridge collapse was sanctioned by the Labor Department for silencing its own employees for reporting safety concerns. And with regard to Boeing, Susan Kang of Truthout explains that the company was aware about safety concerns but chose to ignore them since addressing them would hinder profits. And when it comes to the derailment of the train by Norfolk Southern, safety was also disregarded in favor of profits, including staff cuts, corner cutting, automation, and a reversal of long-term safety and maintenance measures that inhibited short-term profits. So the problem isn't diversity or DEI. It's deregulation, and these companies lobby politicians to take away necessary safety precautions that cost them a lot of money. And it's not just Republicans who have deregulated certain industries, to be fair. Democrats are also to blame. But corporate malfeasance in a capitalist system isn't some unintended consequence. It's to be expected when profits are prioritized above all else. And that's how our system operates. These corporations aren't going to voluntarily subject themselves to burdensome and costly safety regulations. You have to force them to adopt better standards. And since we haven't, they haven't. But conservatives want to have it both ways. They oppose regulations, yet they bemoan bad outcomes that are an inevitable result of deregulations. And just instead choose to blame DEI because that also serves the purpose of uh, scapegoating minorities, which they also love to do. So in conclusion, DEI is useful for conservatives for a couple of reasons. You know, it helps them veil their racism a little bit for sure, but it also helps them run cover for corporations that they're shilling for. See, they can LARP as populists and pretend to be anti-corporate while not explicitly saying or calling for anything that would actually undermine these corporations and what they care about the most, which is their profits. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. Recovery mode, my brain ideas.